<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people, have you ever experienced anything you would consider supernatural? I heard a little girl laughing in the back room of my house. There's no one living around me other than my mother on the hill behind me, and it's in the country so people don't just walk by my house, and that room is cut off from the rest of my house because it's currently filled with lumber for the barn rebuild and other stuff. So there's no one in there. And my daughter doesn't live with me so it wasn't her being in there when she shouldn't be. No explanation. When I was in middle school I lived on a hill that had a graveyard on it. I had a friend who pulled all-nighters with me, in summer it's light here pretty much all night so it was never creepy. As we were heading down the hill I don't know why but I glanced back and saw a little girl in a white dress. This was around 2 or 3 am I stopped and she walked into the woods, which the graveyard was like 100 yard away from. I asked my friend if he saw her and he did, we both thought it was weird so we went up to see where she went but saw no sign of her. Three years later I have a class in high school with a teacher who loved local ghost stories, so every Friday he tells us one or two new ones. Then he talks about the girl at the hill cemetery and it snaps back to me, I got chills from the thought. My friends and I decide to visit the graveyard at night because we were dumb and young, generally creepy so one tried to spook us by hiding, five minutes later he walks up looking pale asking to leave, points to the woods saying a little girl just tried talking to him and I felt like we were being watched from the trees. When I was little I used to sit and draw at this small table we had in front of a window. From this window we could see into our front yard and the street at the edge of it. One day I'm doing my usual coloring while my dad is in the front yard talking to my uncles. When I peeked out I saw a very young looking white man wearing a mechanics jumpsuit walk from behind my neighbor's house and into our yard. I remember I stopped coloring to watch him. He walked behind my uncle and disappeared behind our home. I was scared at that point, thinking he was a robber or something worse. Right when I was about to run for the front door, he reappeared. This time he walked from the other side of our home and up to the road. He looked both ways before continuing down the street. When my dad came back and I asked him why didn't he stop that man from walking in our yard. He told me he didn't see any man and he thought I imagined it. It made no sense. I remember seeing him vividly, I remember feeling genuine fear when he walked behind our home. But my dad and uncles didn't see him at all. I don't have any type of schizophrenia or other disorder. And I wasn't prone to hallucinate as a child. I always wonder if it was just my imagination after all but it felt too real to be that. Okay so when I was about 6 to 7 I lived in a really old creepy house. My sister and I lived in the attic because that's just where the other bedrooms were. I woke up one night and sat up in bed to the sound of scratching. It almost sounded like a cat or dog scratching to come in. I was waking up still and trying to get adjusted to the darkness. When I could finally see a little, I saw something. It was crouched down outside my closet. It was skinny, gray, naked and humanoid. It seemed to be slowly dragging its fingernails or claws over something on the ground that I couldn't see. Being as young as I was, I reached over to grab my plastic blue lightsaber. At the time I was super into reading and had a huge pile of books on the coffee table beside my bed. As I reached for my makeshift weapon, I was too scared to take my eyes off the thing. In the split second that I knocked my books over, the thing snapped its head toward me. It hadn't seen me before and such a motion made it seem like it just snapped its back. Its eyes were yellow and glowing. Something about those yellow eyes froze me to the spot. They seemed so feral. There was no hard light that was in the room that could make eyes glow like that. After what felt like 5 minutes but probably wasn't more than a couple seconds, the thing ran into my closet. My closet didn't have a door on it, I can't remember why my father had taken it off. But after a bit of keeping my eyes trained on the closet, I finally got up holding my lightsaber. I crept over to the light switch and flipped it on. Nothing. It was just gone and there was nowhere else it could have gone. Rationally I would have chalked it up to imagination. However, I looked at the floor where the thing had been scraping at. There I found a mouse, cut up to hell and back. I have no clue what it was but my mind can only guess it was supernatural. This happened in the early hours of Halloween, 2018. It being Halloween is in no way relevant, it has just always made it easier to remember exactly when this incident happened. For work my colleague Tom and I would travel to rural towns, working on farms Monday to Friday. Our accommodation would be provided by the company, usually a motel or caravan park, whichever was cheapest. We were in a small cabin in a caravan park in a town called Bort, in Victoria. Our little cabin was small, with a little living room slash kitchen area, a small bathroom to the left and two small bedrooms side by side at the back. 
We went to bed early because there wasn't much else to do in the town and decided we would wake up early, get our work done and head home ASAP. That's when I had sleep paralysis. I've had it a couple of times before and could recognize that it was happening again. I was laying on my side and I could see someone open the door to my room at the foot of my bed. I watched slash heard them walk around the bed so that they were behind me, next to the window. I heard them open the curtains and a woman's voice sternly said you need to get up, now. Then I could finally move, I was a little freaked out and I checked the time, it was 5.15 am, my alarm would go off at 5.45 so I just sort of waited until I heard Tom get up and joined him in making breakfast. This is when it got weird. He was acting a little strange, and asked me how I slept. I shrugged it off, not wanting to get into the whole sleep paralysis talk first thing in the morning, so I just said fine, you? He then tells me that he woke up at 5.10 because he heard someone shouting his name. He said he woke up and could see someone standing in the doorway to his room, unlike me he slept with the door open all night. He said he just stared at the silhouette and after what felt like minutes it slowly turned and went in the direction of my room. I was stunned for a moment and then decided to tell him what had happened to me, he asked if I was kidding and just trying to spook him and I swore that I wasn't. We packed up all of our stuff in record time and got the hell out of that cabin. I was at girls camp with my church high up in the mountains, about 5 years ago. It was late at night but me and another girl were still awake in our tent, chattering quietly with each other and trying to tire ourselves out so we could drift to sleep for the night. When we finally got tired and said goodnight to each other, I heard the quietest little voice say from outside the tent goodnight. I was laying right next to the tent flap and heard it clearly. It sounded like it came from only a few inches away from my head. For a second I laid there with wide eyes absolutely terrified, thinking there was no way it could be a girl from another tent trying to prank us. Our tent was the farthest away from the others, everybody besides the two of us were already asleep, and I hadn't heard any rustling around outside the tent for hours, in the event if it was someone trying to prank us. I asked the other girl in my tent did you hear that? And I told her what I'd heard and how close it was. She started freaking out a bit too, but then we came up with the bright idea to talk back to the voice. We both turned to the flap and I quietly called out who are you? Then again in the smallest voice, so quiet it could have been a thought in my head, it responded whoever you want it to be. Then we started really freaking out because it wasn't just me this time, the other girl ducking heard it too. I don't think we tried to talk to it anymore because by then we were scared shitless, but there wasn't anything else we could do about it. We just laid there frozen in our sleeping bags trying to calm down and will ourselves to sleep. In the morning we tried telling the other girls and camp leaders what we heard, but I think their responses were just more or less wow that's crazy. And it was quickly brushed off so we could focus on the day's camp activities. Just typing the story brought the chills back. I still like the woods, hiking and all kinds of camping activities, but I don't think I ever want to camp overnight in the woods again. The line between our world and something else gets blurred out there at night. I live out in rural Georgia, the country, so we already have that sort of horror movie-esque vibe going on in the area I live. I remember I was at home alone with my dogs, both big golden retrievers, and fearless old boys. I was sitting in my living room, watching a movie, when one, names Baxter, sits up from his bed, and looks to the basement door, growling hard, at that exact moment, my other golden, begins twitching in his sleep, like how dogs can dream sometimes, whimpering and shit. This sort of freaked me out, but I think nothing of it. Until from the basement door, I hear it. Tap tap tap. Bo wakes up immediately, and Baxter goes nuts and starts barking at the door, these taps were quiet either, they were loud and almost bassy. I go to my dad's room and grab the family 12 gig, I don't duck around with stuff like that. My two dogs still growling at that door, and I slowly open the door, and the two doofuses take off down the stairs. I decide to follow up slower. Before him at the bottom, I hear my dogs barking at something, then I hear a giant crashing of something, then silence, dogs are completely silent, and everything. I turn the corner, and flip the light on, and my dogs are on the ground, completely still. I see they are breathing and they seem fine, just asleep. I look around, 12 gig in my hands, it's a pretty lengthy basement. I then see something move, and then laughter. Childlike, then the light flickers for a moment, and a super chill goes over me, and it almost felt like it. Gusted? Gusted over me, like wind, from the other side of the basement. Then, the light stabilizes, and all goes quiet, and once the light stabilizes, the dogs jump up, and bark again, run to the far end of the basement, where I see one of the shelves had been turned over, and Bo returned with a super duck and old toy, what looked like a girl's doll or something. I'm a dude, and an only child, and it looked like something from the 80s. I tell my parents this story when they get home, 
they both go white, and my dad's a skeptical marine who literally fears nothing, to my knowledge, and they explain that my mother's sister had passed away in the basement, where her bedroom used to be, after committing suicide, with that doll in hand, which they kept as a memory piece. And ever since we have lived there, they have also experienced similar things, but not for a long time, until that night. I'm so happy we recently moved out. He'll never forget it. It happened about two years ago. I was with my girlfriend and best mate at the time. Out of nowhere, he gets a call from his girlfriend, saying there was something in her house. Freaking out, we raced around there to find her outside, down her long driveway sitting on the road hysterically bawling her eyes out. She was usually a composed, sensible young 22-year-old woman, but she was a mess now. She couldn't even speak properly, but managed to get the message out that something was in her house. The three of us that just arrived started to walk towards the house down the driveway to go check it out, at which stage I started to hear choking sounds. I turned to see my girlfriend had fallen to her knees, with her gaze fixed ahead on something down nearer the house, and she was choking and gasping for air. I ran back up beside her to help her, but she was unresponsive. I couldn't get her to answer me when I asked her if she was alright, I tried to help her up but I couldn't move her. I moved around in front of her and as soon as I broke the gaze with whatever she was looking at, she just snapped out of it and came to, and instantly she started sobbing uncontrollably too. She managed to get out that there was some sort of hazy cloud she was looking at, and me and my friend quickly dragged her back over to the road. As we got to the curb, she turned to look back and caught a glimpse of it again. Me and my mate couldn't see a thing, but it took hold of her again, and she stopped breathing. This time I couldn't stop her looking. I stood in the way and she forcibly looked around me to keep eye contact with it. I tried to twist her head away from looking but it was unusually strong and I couldn't. It ended up taking me and my solid 6-2 mate to drag her up and away behind another tree before she'd stop looking and she caught her breath. By this time, everyone was freaking out like crazy. The other girl who lived there hadn't mentioned anything about a haze she was looking at, and she was still just sitting, crying on the curb. She came to console my GF who was now further up the road. At this stage, my mate and I wandered back towards the house, trying to work out WTF was going on. It felt cold. The closer we got, the more our hair stood on edge, and that kind of impending doom feeling set in. We pushed through and got to the front door. I stepped inside, and the atmosphere was like you're in the middle of a horror movie. I don't know why, but it just felt evil inside. I started to move into the house and my mate just yelled at me to stop. Something under the clothes horse, like a mini indoor clothes line, was shaking. There was a towel over the top, and nothing visible underneath it. My mate, without thinking and on a pure adrenaline rush ran over to it and kicked it across the room. There was nothing underneath it, but we felt like a cool rush of air and then the whole feeling and atmosphere vanished. After much deliberating and discussion and freaking out, we eventually got the girls and headed back inside thinking it was all over. No sooner had we walked in the door and the girls caught sight of the clothes horse across the room, and both the girls this time, collapsed where they stood, effectively suffocating and struggling to breath again. Deciding enough was well enough, my mate and I dragged them both outside to the car, put them in, shut the house door and left. The girl who lived there returned several days later to pack her things, and she was out of the house within a week. There was no problems once she returned, but the other three of us have never, and will never return. When I was 12, my dad and I had just left my grandmother's house and were crossing a bridge from her side of the neighborhood to ours. My mom called us to ask if we were on our way home, lol car phones, and then asked what time it was. 11.15, we said. We drive for about 30 seconds more and then our car radio went to static. We tried every station, but they were all static. The headlights started blinking on and off and then the car just stopped. Suddenly, everything around us was bright and I honestly remember passing out. But then we were driving again and we got a call from my mom asking where we'd been. My dad said, getting on the bridge to come home. My mom then told us that we told her that an hour ago, and all of a sudden it all just clicked for the both of us. We explained what happened pre-passing out and went home. It's only a 10 minute drive. Here is something that happened to me in high school. I was a freshman geek and one of my D&D friends got a Ouija board for his 15th birthday. We decided to play around with it of course we pushed the planchette across the board in response to our goofy questions such as will Robbie ever get laid? And other such things. This was all taking place at a guy named Steve's house. Now Steve had this jock older brother who was exactly like the Bill Paxton character in Weird Science, loud, abusive and thought he was funny. So at the tail end of our goof session he comes home and starts fake acting that Ouija's are real and how he needs some spirit advice. Every one of us could tell he was trying to pull a prank on us. 
he asked a spirit to let us know if it was there and pushed the planchette around to spell out answers. He was better, we thought, at moving the thing around the table without being obvious about it. He started to act a little freaked out, then jumped up from the table to leave, telling us we were fags to believe in ghosts. The four of us sat in silence as we watched the planchette begin to tremble slightly. We leaned forward and put our hands on the planchette. The first question was are you a spirit? The thing rocketed to the yes section of the board. We asked are you a bad spirit? It raced across the table like it was scribbling until it went off the board where it froze like it had hit an invisible wall. We sat and waited. We asked it the question again. This time the planchette scooted over the alphabet to spell out the word maybe. We asked it a third time whether it was an evil spirit. This time it didn't move, but merely rested atop the alphabet section of the board. Seconds ticked by. The silence was broken by a loud thump upstairs, like a piece of furniture had been turned over. Steve calls out to his brother. There's no answer. Steve decides to check on his brother. We are totally freaked out because we know this guy is probably waiting to jump out of a doorway and scare us shitless. Turning the corner to his room we see a light turning on and off in kind of a rhythmic fashion. Very quickly I realize that the light is not turning on and off, that something is swinging in front of it. Steve creaks the door open and was all see the same thing. Steve's brother, a belt around his neck, hanging from a beam in the ceiling. His neck was broken. Steve starts hysterically crying and we all try to get the body down. Somebody yells out call 911. I rush down to get the cordless phone and see it on the table where we were playing. That's when I spotted it, the planchette on the Ouija board. It had answered our question of whether it was an evil spirit. It rested on the word yes. The thump was the chair he kicked over to hang himself. When I was in high school, my friends and I would go to the standard spooky, narrow, nearly tree canopied road, either to smoke weed, hang out, or wander around the woods trying to scare ourselves. It had a few small cemeteries back in the woods, one for some of the first free African Americans, another small one for the family who owned the property in the revolutionary era, a bunch of abandoned houses, some totally decimated and around two centuries old, and a lot of urban legend slash folklore. My boy Eric and I were a bit more gung-ho about the folklore and such than the rest of our group, and our holy grail was a slaughterhouse. It was allegedly active for a period of time in the 19th century, and abandoned in the early 20th. Everybody had a friend of a friend of a friend who had been there, but you could never track down somebody who had actually been there. One day, I got a page from Eric, good old late 90s, suffixed with 911. I called him back as soon as I could, as soon as he picked up and heard that it was me, he just said Mike, I found the slaughterhouse. I guess he found it while walking in the woods in the late afternoon slash early evening. Between the impending dark, the fact that he was alone, and the fact that he didn't want to go in for the first time without me, he just made a mental note of the location and went back to his car. So anyway, that weekend went out to find it. I wanted to keep it to he and I for the first visit, but he insisted on inviting a few friends, ostensibly in case we ran into anything slash one back there. Unfortunately, the few people he invited decided to bring their girlfriends and invite a friend of two of their own, it turned into a big crew. The walk back to where it was involved somewhere between a quarter and half mile through the woods. People kept dropping out en route to the spot, be it because the girl was spooked and demanded an escort back to the cars, or because they were spooked themselves. Eventually it was just Eric, myself, my girlfriend and two other guys. One of the guys, Noah, was obviously shook as hell, but he was the type who would never admit to such a thing. It worked out in the end, because my girlfriend asked me to take her back to the car. I looked at Noah and said dude, you don't have to keep going, I can tell you're about to shit yourself. Do me a favor and take Jordan back to the cars. The girl was. Less than pleased with this, but accepted it, now it was just Eric, my boy Matt and myself. A few more minutes of walking, and we came upon a squat, grey stone building. I immediately walked up to the door and gave it a shot. No dice. I looked to my side and noticed that the windows were busted out, and more than close enough to the ground for us to jump through. Unfortunately, Eric and Matt wanted nothing to do with this. I spit out a few of the standard high school phrases regarding their lack of certain male organs and what have you and jumped through the window. The second I'm in, I get the feeling that I absolutely shouldn't be there. There was something about the atmosphere about the place that did it, but the fact that my maglite went out as soon as I was inside had quite a bit to do with it as well. This didn't make a ton of sense, as I replaced the batteries earlier that week, and hadn't used the thing since. I reached into my pocket to grab my lighter so I could get a quick look around the room before getting the hell out of Dodge. Flick. 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 Nothing. At that point, I spoke to the emptiness of the room and I remember my exact words, I'd homie, you win. I ain't ducking with this. I had a wigger tendency or two back then. 
I threw my mag light through the window, then pretty much human torpedoed myself back outside. The second I was on my feet, I lit a cigarette to calm my nerves. Before I had taken the first drag, I was horribly creeped out by the fact that my lighter produced a full flame on the first try. I was even more creeped out when I looked down and saw my mag light on the ground, working perfectly. I remember exactly what I said at this point as well, we're going back to the cars. Now. We did. I have experienced two fantastic coincidences. I was away from home, visiting family and staying in my, widowed, grandma's apartment with my dad. The first night we stayed there I had a vivid dream that I was standing in the basement of my grandparents' old house with some other people I have never seen before. My grandpa was peering in the window and for some reason I was the only person who could communicate with him. I just kept repeating go see my dad. You have to see my dad. The next day, I overheard my dad say to my grandma that he'd had a dream about my grandpa looking in a window at him. My second experience is, odd. When I was a very young child, I had a sort of fantasy that I would dream about and play pretend with. Over the years, the details have faded somewhat but I do remember some things, it was a family that lived under the stairs of my house. The way they moved and talked was different, like, slow and exaggerated. My under the stairs portal opened up into their kitchen and from what I remember they were usually eating. They meals were extravagant and always cooked to perfection. Fast forward to a few months ago, when I watched Coraline. It may seem far-fetched, and it is, but the similarities between that movie and my childhood imagination gave me goosebumps. I almost cried. My parents had some friends over, and they brought their kids over. My parents and the guests were sitting at the kitchen table, about six of them, while my sister, one of their kids and me were playing with a Ouija board in the other room, we were all early teens, about 12 to 15. The last time we played with the Ouija board, it had called me a ducking ducker because I had spilled some candle wax on the board. For some reason, it stopped giving coherent answers after that. Anyway, so the three of us are playing with the Ouija board, but its answers to our questions aren't really making much sense, nonsensical words, or just random strings of letters. Then we hear a deafening boom and a huge flash of light. Everyone in the kitchen cries out, and we run in to see what's up. My mom's yelling oh my god, she's been hit, and everyone's standing up. We take a couple seconds, and realize no one's been hit by anything, but the phone had flown off the wall, and the power cord for the phone had flown into one of the wooden chairs, chipping a pretty big chunk out. A bolt of lightning had hit a tree 30 feet from our house, the tree was right in front of our large kitchen window, so the people in the kitchen had seen an even bigger flash of light than us. We waited about 30 minutes before we went outside, just in case anything else hit. When we went outside, the tree had basically exploded all over the yard, we found wood chips 100 yards from the tree, and the 10 meters tall tree was split in half. The weird thing about it was that was the only bolt of lightning that hit. There was no rain, no distant thunder, no gusts of wind, just that lone lightning strike. Needless to say, that was the last time we played with a Ouija board. I might have been around two years old. My grandfather and I were in the cellar of his home which is over 100 years old. The cellar itself had a large room with smaller rooms to the sides, and a long hallway which led to my grandfather's dark room, which I call the red room because of the safe light. Once, my grandfather and I were standing at the opposite end of the hall from the dark room with all lights but the dull, red safe light off when I started talking in the direction of the dark room. I am saying what? Why? Who are you? My grandfather asks what I am doing, and I say I am talking to the man in the red room who is peeking down the hallway. My grandfather goes to look and no one is there, when he hears me start talking again. He comes and grabs me and runs up the stairs. I have experienced many supernatural things, and am usually shocked to hear it's not normal for others to see slash hear things all the time like I do. It's kind of just everyday stuff that I take in stride now, like everyone else's daily routine. Except mine includes disembodied voices, footsteps, feeling strange presences, doors slamming by themselves and the like. The most memorable thing happened when I was a young girl, about five. My father was remolding our house so my mother took my two sisters and I to a friend's house where we lived for about six months until renovations were done. We came back home on the weekends. I remember the house being really big and old, with two stories for living spaces, an attic and a basement. I had a room all to myself upstairs, and after a few weeks of living there I started being visited by a malevolent presence that would come sometime in the wee hours in the morning. You all may have heard of the accounts of people being possessed they speak of a feeling of a massive weight, and sometimes the feeling of intense heat. I definitely remember both those things, right before my bed would start shaking. Like really shaking hard, and fast. After about 6 or 10 seconds of this shaking, it would stop, and the presence would dissipate. 
This ordeal completely drained me, and I passed out right after it happened, every time. For a long time I forgot about this experience, until a conversation in high school over a decade later brought it all back, shockingly. After I remembered, I have wondered if I was remembering it wrong, and perhaps somebody was taking advantage of me when I lived in that house. Until my mother admitted she watched the phenomenon happen to me not once, but twice. I've heard a bunch of explanations of what it could have been, but I'm satisfied to know that I'm older now and stronger, I think. I can easily shrug things like that off. Hiking in the hills of Oakland, California with a couple of friends. We were looking for a place to sit for a minute, and saw a black picnic table set at an angle up a steep hill about 30 yards off the path. We went up to go sit on it. Like it's from the 50s with a huge hood. We go back to th one of my friends notices an old crashed car that is visible from the table, but not the path. We check it out, it's rusted brown and loo picnic table. 15 minutes when we start to hear noises fading in and out, children laughing all around us and screeching tires. It sounded like it was super near us rather than seemingly originating from the car, it was literally in 360 degrees around us. We listened to this for about an hour, during which it became more frequent. Finally, I heard the laughter turn to screams and twice a group of voices pleaded together very clearly, help us. I got freaked out and we hiked out of there. Only when we got back to the car did I find out that my two friends hadn't heard the screams or the last bit. I've been back to the spot with different friends and didn't have similar experiences, although the spot still felt pretty weird. True story, I swear. It was the middle of the night when my grandfather heard a baby crying in his house. This was not unusual, because my aunt, his daughter, had just given birth and was living with them. He attempted to go back to sleep, but the baby just kept on crying. Wondering why his daughter hadn't tended to her son in the next room, he goes to check on both of them. But once he enters the room, he realizes the crying he hears isn't coming from his daughter's room, but from the kitchen. She must be in the kitchen, he thinks to himself. But as he makes his way there, he sees that no one is in there, but that he still hears a baby crying from within. Not knowing what's going on, he goes back to his daughter's room, sees that both her and his grandson are asleep, then goes back to his room to wake up my grandmother. He explains to her what's happening, but she thinks he must either be crazy or sleepwalking. Together, they again check their daughter's room, but still hear a baby's crying coming from the kitchen. As they approach the kitchen, the crying becomes louder and louder. Upon entering the kitchen they turn on the lights, but see that no one is there. That's when they realize the crying is coming from the stove area. They approach the stove, but realize that it's actually coming from within the stove. That's when they open the oven. They hear a baby crying from inside the oven, but see no baby. Neighbors next door to us in Okinawa, Japan would complain about ghosts. At first, I thought it was a joke and that they just wanted to move back to where they were originally from. Turns out that they set up a camera and caught footage of their lights flickering and a figure appearing in the corner of the room. There are many stories concerning that island that are beyond creepy. I wish we could salvage the footage of my brother, and a few of his friends, going up to a house that has been gated off to the public. My brother caught footage of the door slamming and it locking by itself. Also, there's another house that was cursed and still stands today Irk. The lady who got kicked out declared that anyone who lived in that house after her would die and if it were torn down, then the commander of the Air Force Base and his slash her family would die. Every family who has lived there ended up dying in that house, deaths range from accidental, suicidal, and a husband ending his family before hanging himself. The house's windows were shuttered because people felt that someone was staring at them when they passed by. People walking past can occasionally hear a telephone ring or water running although no one has lived there for years. I know it seems like a huge fib, but I've experienced these firsthand. Any other military brat who has lived on Okinawa can confirm these chilling stories. I didn't used to believe in paranormal until something really creepy happened with me. We, me and my family, moved to a rented house. It was a new city and the house was pretty big. We got it really cheap and I was amazed at the fact that how we got it so cheap. At the same day. I was playing games on my PS3 at around 3 PM and it automatically turned off. In one or two seconds the television turned off and I saw a bright white dot moving around on the screen. I turned around and there was nothing. I was unable to understand it and GTA 4 was new at that time so I started playing again. At around 7 PM, everyone went outside and I decided to stay in the house and clean it. When I was cleaning the kitchen, I heard footsteps on the main door. I went to check it out and saw a young guy there, I said welcome, you're my neighbor? And he said no, this house is mine and better you leave it as soon as possible. I thought he was messing around with me so I said him look dude, we've rented it so now it's ours and I told him to leave. He left and I had extreme goosebumps. 
I continued cleaning and I saw a lady walking around outside the kitchen window. Now she had a serious ghost-like look. I rushed outside and called my dad. My dad told me that it's a new home and he told me that we're not going anywhere else. Anyways, I stayed outside till my mom returned home. After some time, my dad came running and told us all to come with him. He took us to a hotel. The thing was, when my dad was talking to me on the phone, someone asked him what he was talking about. When my dad told him all the things and that person asked about the address. That guy said pack your things fast. Take my car and get your child out of there ASAP. After a few days, I went to that house again. I asked the neighbors about it and they said a couple committed killed themselves there. They showed me a picture and the guy in that pic was the same as the guy who told me to leave the house when I was cleaning the kitchen. It ducking horrified me. I mean, I had fever for 20 days. My mother is a world-class horse trainer, she started when she was just a girl and has been doing it now for 40 years. She does it for the love of working with horses mostly. That's not the point of the story though, but it provides the backstory as to why we were in driving in Kansas so late, when we're from Oregon. Anyways, it was 2004, I was 10 years old and my mother had been training a horse named Petty Cash for a number of years, I can't remember exactly how long, but my earliest memory of PC is at 9. He was a beautiful horse and had distinguished himself greatly in shows in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and California, so much so that we could go to the Abra World Show in Oklahoma. So in early summer my mother, I and the three foster kids we had at the time, Guy, John and Michael, loaded up into Petty Cash's owner's truck and we started the drive. The horse's owner was active military and was in Iraq at the time, at least that's what I remember of the man. So, kids being kids, I and all the others got into fights, picked sides, pushed, shoved, poured pop on our enemies and at one point hucked batteries at each other. It was a drama-filled trip down and we were now running quite late. The show started the morning we would arrive, so we were in high gear, polishing saddles, bits and halters on the way there and once we got there. We were finally finished and were all sitting in the truck, as mom drove towards Tulsa, Oklahoma where the show would be held. Approaching the border of Kansas and Oklahoma we were all getting tired, it was probably midnight or 1 in the morning when we saw a mileage sign ahead of us that told us that a town was 18 miles ahead of us, we decided that when we got there we would take a nap, we were all rubbing our eyes. That's when it got strange. The truck's interior got very cold, like we were running the AC, but it was off and there was no air coming from the vents. My mother and guy, who was really into the kind of stuff you'd find on no sleep, he once tried to summon the devil in our house, but that's a different story. We're talking about something that I can't remember and their conversation began to lengthen as we passed the 18 mile sign. I remember there was an old wooden billboard that was halfway fallen over in the pasture next to the sign that was advertising a gas station that was probably long out of business. There was a growing silence, even with my mother and foster brother talking in the front, John, Michael and I heard it as if through a wall, or underwater. Also, the scenery around us, cows and small trees and shrubs, began to go by slower, even though we never left 60 mile per hour. My mother going 60 down the highway and the truck's digital clock glowing green, we started to mark time. The truck did not turn, the road was perfectly straight. An hour passed and we hadn't arrived in the town yet and we'd been going 60 miles per hour the entire time. That was when we passed the same 18 mile sign, the same billboard fallen down in the pasture next to it. We all took notice now, as we pulled blankets and coats around ourselves. By the time 4 o'clock rolled around, we'd passed the same sign, going 60 mile per hour, three times. Then, as soon as it started, it ended. I can only describe the sensation that came over me, it was as if there was a strong piece of cellophane had been stretched across the road and we drove right into it. The cellophane stretched as we drove into it and we began to get warmer and sound began to return, until we broke through the other side. It was loud, hot and it felt to everyone as if the truck had turned from an RC car into a NASCAR, we were all pushed back into our seats by the momentum. Mother, John, Michael, Guy and I were all really weirded out. I can only guess that PC, riding in the horse trailer behind us, was slobbering with fear. We did quite well when we got to the worlds, but we all remark on the experience just about any time we meet up and talk. It was odd to say the least. In my early 20s I took a personal day for my night shift job. I just needed a break, and to get outside for a while. I drove about 15 miles from home to a church that is one of those stone labyrinth walking slash contemplation circles. When I made it to the middle of the labyrinth, there was a tremendous snarling sound from the tree line about 150 feet away, which was followed by what sounded like a horse screaming in fear or pain. The horse sound stopped abruptly, there was a thud, and then complete silence. I stood there frozen, 
not moving, thinking there must be a bear or a wolf or something, both unlikely, as this was in the suburbs of Chicago, listening as intently as I could. Nothing. A minute past. More nothing. I start thinking, okay, must have been a spooked animal that ran off. Nothing to worry about. Come on, adrenaline, calm yourself down. I took one step to start back down the path out of the contemplation circle. Behind me, a crashing sound, breaking branches, then thumping of heavy footfalls on the ground, coming straight towards me. Something huge and near impossible to describe other than dark and hairy covered the 150 feet between me and the tree line in just a couple seconds. Whatever it was barely brushed against the side of me, knocked me down and sent me rolling about 5 feet from where I was, and raced around the side of the church. Just like that it was over. No more sound. No footfalls. No animal screams. No breaking branches. Just me, alone and terrified in the dark. Once I recovered, I didn't bother walking the path out. I sprinted across the stone lines and broke for my car, got in, and drove off to a well-lit Walmart parking lot. I only realized after I parked that I never even took the time to turn my headlights on. It was almost eight years ago that this happened, but I remember it so vividly. I was a horny teenager in rural Pennsylvania and it was the summertime. If any of you have been to rural Pennsylvania, you'll know that houses can be miles apart from one another, the girl who invited me over that night was five miles away, and five miles wasn't all too much to me because it was warm and I regularly walked more than that, being without a car and all. I made it to her house and, well, we had our fun. It was maybe half past three in the morning when I decided to walk home. I crawled out of the window and made my way down the dirt road leading to her house, eventually hitting a completely forested area that had a horse farm at its end. As I walked through this near pitch black trail through the woods, I heard. Something. At first it was quiet. Rustling, a faraway screech. But it just kept getting closer. I heard it getting closer and eventually screaming behind me, then finally being right up against my ear, blood-curdling screams. My heart was pounding and I had never been so terrified, but I was too scared to see what was screaming in my ear, I merely kept my face forward and steadily walked at the same pace. Eventually, the screaming grew distant as I kept walking, as if this thing had stood still as I moved forward. As soon as I got to a clearing with an ample amount of moonlight shining down on me and the screeches were no longer within my earshot, I ran. I ran as fast as I could to get the duck away from whatever had just happened. To this day, I don't know what any of that was about, but I was looking up paranormal topics on Wikipedia and somehow found this article about a ghost in a part of the area that I grew up in. This happened when I was about six, I lived in a big ranch with my grandparents. Some of my relatives were visiting that day and I went to play with my cousins, we had these long vine tunnels that led all the way down to a stream and we picked fruit on our way down there. As we were getting close to the stream we heard a cry coming from down there. We all turned shocked and. I know it sounds ducking crazy but a thing that looks exactly like a Dementor was flying towards us. They immediately started running back home and I froze, they yelled at me to run and I fell, the thing was getting close to me, it was levitating and had these glowing yellow eyes, it keep weeping very loudly and one of my bigger cousins picked me up and we were able to get out of the tunnels, the thing stopped following us after I was picked up by my cousin and then disappeared. The thing got so close to me I could see its arm it was like a dark skeleton. I thought for a second my cousins were pulling a prank but no way, the thing was levitating and came towards us fast as hell, plus the eyes. After we came out some of my cousins were crying, I was just so confused, then my big cousin told us not to say anything to no one, we all agreed. But I was like yeah right duck that I told my grandma immediately, I was like courage the dog mumbling, remember that cartoon? She dismissed me cause she was talking to my aunt. Later that night I told her again but she didn't believe me. Has anybody experienced or seen this kind on thing? I had just moved into my first apartment. It was a very small studio in a not so great neighborhood. I was 21. I started noticing things going missing after a couple of weeks. A nice pair of underwear. A charm bracelet. Things I thought maybe I left somewhere or lost or misplaced. Until I noticed a picture of me and my friend I had on my fridge was gone. I was perplexed. I turned my apartment upside down. No picture. Over the course of the year, little things would just disappear. I even went to the office and asked how many employees had access to my apartment. The office manager showed me the safe with the keys and showed me the log of who takes what key when. None of the dates added up to missing items. I was perplexed. I was about two weeks from moving out because my lease was up and I was moving in with my boyfriend. A storm came in and damaged the apartment building, roof and HVAC. Maintenance let me know they'd be coming in to replace duct work and replenish insulation. The guys come in, 
go in my bedroom closet, and lo and behold, there's a panel leading to this weird attic space that spans the entire half of the apartment, four homes. I had no idea it was there and the maintenance guys assure me that it's only accessible from my apartment. I decided to poke my head up and look about while they were up there. In the back corner above my bedroom, was what I can only describe as a shrine of my stuff. My underwear, picture, jewelry, all of my missing items. All together. Placed in a triangle. I got so freaked out I just left it all there. I moved into my boyfriend's house that night. I had him and his friends move my things for me so I didn't have to go back. I told the apartment manager but she didn't seem to care at all. I get physically ill when I talk about it still because I know someone was watching me that whole time and I had no clue.